Good afternoon. My name is Natasha Carleon, and I'm a software engineer at Greater Sum, which is a company that provides consulting and training services on agile and clean code practices. So if you're interested in our company, or if you have any questions about this presentation, please feel free to contact me either by email or by my Twitter handler. So today I'm going to talk about creating a Dungeons and Dragons character form using reactive forms. So I'll be a little part of my form out. And just so, just please keep this in mind. You don't have to have any prior knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons in order to follow along with the code. So you don't have to have any prior knowledge. So then mine, I may jump to my form. So here I have a basic form, and I have some default values. And then I mean, like, type up a name. Let's say I have Fluffy. And then I go to the next page, and here I have Fluffy the Forest Gnome. So my goal now is to build out the abilities form for Fluffy, or whatever the name I have. Um, just an FYI, you'll see me going to the first page first. That's just because this form is dependent on the, mostly the character's race. So I'm going to jump to the code now. Here I have my basic reactive form. FB is short for form builder, which I'm injecting here. And then a reactive form is essentially a form group. So I'm going to start with my first um, ability, which is strength. And then this is going to be a nested form group. It's going to have four form controls, ability stat, and it's going to be a simple value of zero. The next is going to be the race modifier, which I'm going to do a new form control class. Um, you capitalize. Form control class. I'm going to set the value. The value is going to be dependent on the strength of the character's race. And then the, I'm going to set the disable to true because I don't want the user to modify that value. So the next up is the ability total score. And instead of a new form control, I'm going to use an array instead. I'm going to set that to zero. And again, the disable is going to be true. I personally prefer using the array instead of explicitly creating the new form control. Mostly, I prefer the array because it's just cleaner and it's just like easier to read in general. Um, also, if you're adding a bunch of stuff to the array, it's easier to read. So now, I'm going to use a nifty tool of WebStorm called Live Templates. It's where you type up an abbreviation. And then if I press Tab, it's going to output all the code that I already wrote for that abbreviation, like so. So here's all my abilities. Now I'm going to hop over to the HTML to display those abilities. Here I have my form. And this is like the basic form. So there's abilities form. Each ability is going to be wrapped with the parent div with the class ability row. So I'm going to add my form group name here, which is strength. That's what I called it. And then I'm going to add my first form control. Um, it's going to be the ability stat column. And let's add my label. And then let's add my input with the type um, text. And my form control name for this guy is going to be ability stat. I may add the other form controls, which is, um, let's see, yeah, ability strength. And then each ability is going to look pretty much exactly the same, except it has a different name. So I may go ahead and add the rest of my abilities. Ability dash rows. Uh, the formatting's a little off, so let me format that. 129 lines there. So now if I hop over to my form, if this works, yay. OK, that's good. I have my code here. So my ultimate go is if I type in a number like 16, it should modify the ability total score and the ability modifier. That's my go. I could technically do it with the code I have now, but I'm going to do a little refactoring to make my job easier. So here I have a bunch of form groups with the same form controls. This is a great opportunity to create a form array. So I'm going to have my ability array. It's going to be type form array equals this dot form builder dot array. And I could, if I wanted to, literally copy and paste some of my form groups into here. But instead, I'm going to use my own class. Um, I called it ability. And then if I F12, go into ability, 
you see I already have this class typed out. I have my four familiar form controls. I'm passing in the race modifier. There's also something a little new here, the ability name, which is a string. Um, although it's a string in this context of the class, as soon as I pass that into my form group, that ability name will transform into a form control, which you'll see later. So let's go ahead and create those um, ability classes. So the ability name is strength, and then the, I mean, I have to add the race modifier, that strength. Then I'm going to add the rest. There we go. And now I can go ahead and delete all these lines. Oops, a little too far. Don't want to delete that much. I have abilities and then ability array. And I'm going to go ahead and create my getter. This is not really a necessity, but it just helps save time so you don't have to like, type a thing over and over again. So like, I don't have to keep typing this, that, abilities, form, dot, get, um, abilities. So it just helps keep your code a little cleaner. Now I have to hop over to my HTML. I'm going to undo all the abilities I added. Essentially, I'm going to do an ng4 over this ability row. So I need to add my parent div, which is going to be the form array name, uh, form array name, which I called abilities. And then I need to move this up into that div. Uh, make sure I got that last div. Let's see. Yep, three divs. Um, OK. And then now I can do the ng4. So ng4 equals let ability. This is where my getter comes in handy. Abilities. I'm going to add dot controls. Let i equals index, not index. That doesn't exist. OK. Now I can add the brackets around the form group name. Um, for reactive forms, the form group name has to be an index when you're using a form array. You don't it can't be a custom name. Here, like I mentioned before, the ability name is not a string. So if I did ability dot ability name, this will not work. I have to treat it like a form control because it's a form control. So I have to do ability dot get ability name dot value. Then I will see the form control. So if I did this correctly, my form should look exactly the same. And it does. So that shows that I refactor my code successfully. I changed the code without changing its functionality. Um, it's a lot more cleaner. This is a lot easier to manage now. Now I can do what I really ultimately want to do is I want to change those values. So if I um, F12 on this. Um, I want the ability class to be in charge of modifying these values. So I may add a method on here. This uh, on changes. I may create that method. And then this dot, um, let's see, ability stat dot value changes dot subscribe ability stat. And then here I go. So what this is essentially doing is, is value changes is saying, Whatever I see the ability stat changing, um, execute the code in here. Ability stat is whatever I type in. If I type in the number 15, that's going to be the number 15. So let's get those values. Uh, please ignore these mathematical formulas. They don't matter. What matters is that I'm getting the numbers that I need to for these two. So now I'm going to add, patch those abilities up. Oh, not that. It's going to be this dot ability total score dot patch value, and I can just send it the ability total score, and then this dot ability modifier dot um, patch value. Oh, that's not right. Patch value, and then um, ability modifier. So if I save this, and if I did this correctly. Um, this should hopefully work. So if I start typing, and it's working. So you see all those numbers are changing. So pretty some high stats there. Um, <laughs> so however, if I click back, and then I go back to this page, I'm like, what? They're all zeros. 
Now I'm gonna have to re-roll those dice rolls. No, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna implement an auto-save feature. What I want to do is if I type number 15, I go back and I go back to this page, I should still see the number 15. There's a lot of different ways to do this. How I'm going to do it, I'm going to use the publish subscribe pattern. So the publish subscribe pattern is when you have a publisher. The, here my publisher is a character pub subservice. The publisher um, is in charge of keeping track of a value. The value is saved character form. The publisher doesn't have any knowledge of the subscribers. In this scenario, my subscriber is here, and this is also another subscriber because it's a different component. Um, so my subscribers can call these methods, and just so you know, I'm using my saved character form as a behavior subject, which is an observable. I'm getting this from RxJS. So here, um, if my subscriber calls .update, it passes in an object and is saying that the save character form, please set the save character form to that object. Here, get value is saying that please return whatever save character form is. Here on update, it's saying that whenever I see save character form is changing, it's just detecting those changes. For right now, we're just gonna focus on those, these two, update and get value. So if I jump to my abilities form component, I could, in theory, do the auto save feature in the ability class, but I'm not. I'm gonna do it in the ability form component because of really the form should be responsible for saving the data. Also, if I wanna add more to the abilities form component, the auto save feature needs to be in this component. So I'm gonna create this, um, let's see, I guess I'll do it here. A new method, auto save, and then let's create that method. And then all I have to do is, um, oh, I should show you this first. So I'm injecting my character pub sub, which is my publisher, and I'm grabbing the saved value here, which is grabbing whatever I saved in the previous component. So here I can edit that easily. I can say this dot saved character form dot abilities equals this.abilities. That's where my getter's coming in handy. And then I can do this.characterPubSub.update this.saveCharacterForm. This will not work as of right now because if I go to my create ability form, I'm always newing this up. I need to use my original saved value. So if I want to get this working like really fast, I can do something like this. Um, let's see. So I'm in set this to this dot save character form dot abilities, and then if ability array dot length equals um, zero, then do this. There we go. Um, so essentially, this is saying if there's no really if there's no abilities, then you can do it up. So if I did this correctly. Um, and then I click save and continue, and then let's say I type the number 17, and I go back, then I click this, oh, 17 is still there. So I have my auto save future in place. So my auto save future is working, that's perfect. Um, so now I'm gonna go over the, let's see, on update. So I want to touch on that a little. Um, I want to touch on my on update function here. So I'm going to show you, it's sort of a contrived example, but it's just to get the concept across. So here I have my character path, Swirkle the wizard. Uh, I'm just going to have two character paths. If I change it to illusion, I have these different character features. This is a child component. This is a parent component. If I change it back to evocation, I have different character features. So how am I doing that? Well, I'm using my publish subscribe pattern. Um, what I'm essentially doing is, I mean, vertically split this. And then I'm mean, gonna go over here. So we're focusing on this. And then we're gonna focus on this. All right. So what's happening here is that whenever my character path changes, like evocation to illusion, it's going to save that value. Um, the save character form is going to be updated. 
Here, this uh, character pub subbed on, on update is detecting the changes. It's, so it's going to execute this code whenever it sees that the saved character form is changing. And in this scenario, it's grabbing the character path features for the corresponding character path. So this is pretty cool because I'm not using any event emitters. I don't have like at input or at output here. These components are not talking to each other. They are talking to my character pub sub. They are just calling the um, relevant methods that they need to in order to grab the information. So that's pretty powerful. Um, so now I'm going to Actually, I'm really surprised that I haven't made any mistakes. <laughs> I actually put like added more time, so in case if I made any coding mistakes, so that really surprised me. I didn't make any mistakes, but I'm going to summarize this. Okay, so I'm going to summarize what we went over. So now, so I really want you to walk away from this presentation with like really two main takeaways. One is creating a custom class for nested form groups. Um, it's true you can transform form groups to a form array, but really, even if you only have one nested form group, I would recommend trying to see if you can change that, um, use a custom class for that form group, because it really helps encapsulate your logic. It just helps clean up your code. Also, I hope you can walk away with um, knowing about the publish subscribe pattern because the publish subscribe pattern really helps. Um, it eliminates the need for event emitters, and it helps decouple components from each other. So you have a lot of communication going on, and you have a lot of components to work with. It just really helps um, decouples those components, and those components are not talking to each other. Instead, those components are talking to the publisher. So that really helps clean up your code and organizes it. So now, um, if you're interested in checking out this code, I have my final version on my GitHub repository. Here is my GitHub repository. Um, you might also see changes on it later on in the future. Also, please feel free to contact me either by email or by Twitter. Um, I'm passionate about test-driven development, clean code practices, and agile practices, or if you're just looking for, um, if you have any questions about Angular, so just please feel free to reach out to me and use me as a resource. I don't mind answering questions. Um, so now I would like to take this as an opportunity to um, thank you all for giving me this time to share the knowledge that I, I have. Thank you. <laughs>